Okay y'all, let's make a patchwork teddy bear together. Tell. Welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to make the patchwork version of my new Teddy Tell pattern. You should definitely check out some of my previous videos. We made the one yard fabric bear in, and the bow tie in a different video. So if that's what you're interested in, make sure you check out that one. This video we're actually going to make the patchwork bear with the two and a half inch squares. So I am going to use the lighthearted, the, the new um, charm pack that I just got in the Fat Quarter Shop sew sampler box. This is a mode of fabric and so I've already cut them. So I have, we need 234 two and a half inch squares. And so I've already cut those and we're going to sew them together and I'm gonna show you how to make these adorable patchwork bears. So what we're gonna do is on the first section, we are going to just make it scrappy. So we're just gonna pull from, usually when I cut up a collection and it kind of comes in colors, I usually sort of try to separate them a little bit. For the first section, we're gonna cut on your pattern. If you're looking at your pattern, you want to make a piece A piece. You're gonna make four of the A pieces and that's four rows across and four rows down. sewing a quarter inch seam on all of these okay so now we have four four by four blocks so we've got now we have those four ready and that's all we need for the four by fours so now we're gonna sew 42 squares together and we're gonna make them seven across and six down and we're gonna make four of those as well so I have four of these and they are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven across and six down. And so I have four of those. These are just the two and a half inch pieces. And I've got, and now I'm going to sew those rows together and then we'll be ready to load them to the long arm. Okay, so I now have four of the four by fours finished and they're pieced together and now I have three of the seven by sixes. And so I want to, to make sure that I note that under normal circumstances when I would be making a piece like this, I would make sure that my blocks all matched and my, my you know, I nested perfectly and I'm kind of a perfectionist. But for the bears, I think everything goes, anything goes. Um, these, uh, there's definitely some that there's spaces and they don't match up. I almost kind of think they look cuter when they're, because when you put the bear together, there's, you know, you're, you're getting little pieces of all your blocks and they're not necessarily square when you're looking at it anyway. So, um, so I did just want to make a note that just get your pieces together. Don't worry too much about perfection when you're doing this because your quilting is going to make things look differently as well. So, um, so that's my little tip for, for this part. So I'm going to finish my last one and then we'll be ready to start some quilting. And so you can do your quilting on your standard machine, just like this one. You can just do lines or swirls or anything. You can practice free motion. You know, you can, you can just, you know, kind of go from corner to corner, um, or you can send it to a long arm, a long arm quilter, have them quilt it, or if you have a long arm, you can quilt it. Um, so there's, there's several options, but since I do have long arm machines, I'm going to go ahead and load these and, um, I'll let you see that. So I'm going to finish this up and then we will get them loaded.
Okay, here's another little thing that I am going to mention is in the uh, pattern, I do note um, that there's a tell tip to make sure that when you're attaching your piece at the top to the piece at the bottom, the A to the B, you might want to make sure that this general area right here is going to be a lighter color. If you're using really dark colors, you want to make sure that you're using a lighter color if you're using the black eyeballs like I use. If you're using something lighter, then it probably won't matter. But um, do just be aware that when you're placing your bear that you might want to make sure that your eyeball space is going to be somewhere that you want it to land so that you can you know maybe flip it this way or flip it that way um, so that's just something to pay attention to when you're uh, putting your two fronts together what we're going to do is if you notice on your pattern on page three you're going to be sewing a piece a to a piece b and you're going to put the four by fours up here and then you're going to put the six by sevens down below and you're going to sew those two pieces together so they're going to sew this way and then you're going to sew them like that and you're going to want one two three four five six seven you're going to want it to go seven sideways so that you've got them the, so that they're nice and wide then you're going to take your template that we cut out on muslin and then you'll be able to quilt those and then once they're quilted you'll be able to trim out your pieces and then you'll have two mirror images of your front so when we do this one we just flip it over and then once it's sewn together and quilted then you'll just trim it out and then you'll have your front pieces done and the back will go the same way I've lost my back piece <laughs> I'm queen of losing stuff <laughs> <laughs> okay, so now your back piece, you have two extra, if you notice on your pattern, it tells you you have two extra C pieces. Those two pieces, those two pieces are going to go down on the bottom, and so for your back, you're like going to lay your back out, and you see how your little tail hangs over, I'll show you up close. So the little tail hangs over and we don't have enough so you can just randomly place an extra it does not have to line up with your seams you don't have to put it right there you can put it right in the middle wherever you need it to be so when you're when you're pinning then just put it wherever you need it to be and then fold it over stitch right there press it and then you'll have your spot ready for your little tail and so that's the only difference between the back and the front. And so the back, this way, you would do the same thing. You'll just fold it over, or flip it over, I guess. And then you'll want to do another little piece down here on the bottom, same way. Okay, so one more thing I want to mention is just in case you uh, sew your pieces together and for some reason it's just not big enough. Um, mine come pretty close on both sides, and that's okay because I've made a million of these, but I did want to let you know that if you don't feel comfortable with that, you can always sew two or three or four pieces together, and sew these three pieces together, and then um, attach them attach them right here just anywhere. It doesn't have to line up with your seams and you can try to make it line up. But if that makes you feel uncomfortable, if you wanna be able to move it around a little bit, feel free to add another couple pieces. And if you wanted to add another couple pieces over to the other side, you know, you can certainly do that. So don't feel like if you make a mistake and it's just not quite long enough on one side that you know, you've messed up. Just add a couple more blocks and you'll be just fine. So the patchwork teddy bear tutorial was getting a little bit long, so I'm going to break it into pieces. Um, we are going to talk about the long arm portion. I'm going to put that in a separate video, so um, so catch that in a different video. And I'm also wanted to remind you that in the first tutorial, I talked about all the different variations of um, fabrics and clothes and that sort of thing to go over if you're making a patchwork bear out of clothing and so I did touch on that in the first tutorial so you may want to catch that um, if you're trying to pull things pull clothes and decide what fabrics to use. Mm -hmm.